Hi right, guys, you will be shocked to hear it is another gloomy, gray, rainy day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in the Finger Lakes of New York on this gloomy Saturday, October 16th, 2021. I thought I was going to be out working all day uh, digging a flood control channel in my backyard, but uh, it is too wet and rainy to dig a flood control channel today. Uh, I love the irony of it being too rainy to dig a flood control channel, but since I have nothing else to do, I'm going to do what I usually do on Saturday. And uh, this is our weekly hopium, apocaloptimism, corporate greenwashing, magical thinking, whatever you want to call it, uh, roundup. Now, you know, I was gone three days out of the last seven, so uh, I was out of the doomosphere for a few days, but I think I've scared up a few here combing through the hopium, and we're going to start with uh, good old William Shatner. I did not do you realize that William Shatner is 90 years old, 90 years old, and obviously the man has turned into a completely senile old bat. Um, several versions of this. Uh, this is Business Insiders. Similar versions. You know, he just went up in this rocket ship. Uh, William Shatner went up finally in a, in a real rocket ship and came back completely deluded. <clears throat> William Shatner pushes back at Prince William after space trip saying... William has the wrong idea about space flight. So, you know, William, uh, Prince William is one of these uh, critics of, uh, of humans going into outer space. The, the royal Prince William, uh, you know, talking about maybe we should try to fix our own planet before blasting uh, into outer space, taking all of this crap with us. But uh, William Shatner says, obviously, William has it all wrong. So what is the correct reason that humans are supposed to be exploring space? It's not what you think. It's not, uh, I, I mean, at least I thought at first he was going to say he's in uh, support of colonizing Mars. He's not quite there but uh, he's certainly on his way. Okay. Shatner said the point of space flight was not to show off, but to establish the first steps toward moving polluting industries off of Earth and into space. There you go. I guess instead of planet eating, they're going to be asteroid eating. You know, this, this whole idea of mining asteroids uh, is, is, is what he's talking about here. And then, of course, the next jump is the moon, and the next jump is Mars. Uh, take it away. William Shatner, quote, The prince is missing the point. The point is these, these, you know, these space flights by all these billionaires. The point is, these are the baby steps to show people that it is very practical. Yes, you can send somebody like me up into space. Yes. Jeff Bezos has also said that all heavy industries and polluting industries should be moved to space. Yeah, so uh, Jeff Bezos and William Shatner uh, teaming up to save the planet. And as, uh, you know, uh, but I guess Business Insider has is throwing some uh, a wet blanket on the party. 
Despite their visions, meaning William Shatner and Jeff Bezos' visions of sustainability, trips to space produce huge amounts of carbon dioxide, which can linger in the atmosphere for years. And the, I, the, the idea, the very idea of shipping unwanted industries into space would present an expensive logistical nightmare that likely would not be possible any time in the near future. Do you think so, Business Insider? Yes, okay, so that is how the senile old bat William Shatner saving the planet. Okay, we're going to go from William Shatner to Prince Charles, uh, or I guess from Prince William to Prince, is, is Charles is William's father? I can't remember, I, I can't keep all of these royals straight. I think Charles, is Charles Philip's son and William's father anyway? What is Prince Charles up to? Prince Charles advocates clean energy at COP15. Okay, guys, so I finally got it cleared up about this COP15 that, uh, uh, you know, Manga Bay keeps talking about COP15, and I thought it was just a typo, but no, they're just throwing all of these cops in us. COP15, I guess, is the 15th UN meeting on saving biodiversity, and COP26 is on climate, you know, these two tracks. Uh, so COP15 is the latest pipe dream about how we're going to save our fellow earthlings. Alright, <clears throat> get right to it. Prince Charles, what is on your mind? Quote, I would like to applaud the recent commitments by many world leaders to end the investments in coal-fired power stations as a critical step. And as we rapidly scale up renewables and hydrogen, at least he understands that hydrogen is not renewable, it is essential that in the meantime we deploy the latest carbon capture use and storage technology in order to help us buy precious time by capturing harmful emissions until a full transition is possible." Close quote. And so I guess the Save the Planet COP15 meeting on biodiversity taking place in China. Yes. Uh, anyway, I could get off into a hall ran about the UN uh, saving the planet, but we got to move on. Uh, all right, we've heard from William Shatner, Jeff Bezos, and Prince Charles. Now let's listen to our very own U.S. Secretary of Energy, Jennifer Granholm sounding like a, because that's what she is, sounding like a mouthpiece for the oil and gas industry. Because it, it, does anybody not understand this, that the U.S. Secretary of Energy is a mouthpiece for the oil and gas industry? So what is the biggest mouthpiece of the oil and gas industry claiming? <clears throat> U.S. Secretary of Energy says North Dakota's carbon storage capacity is a, quote, gift to the planet. There you go. North Dakota's carbon storage capacity, a gift to the planet. Uh, <clears throat> Granholm uh, said she believes North Dakota is poised to play a key role in addressing climate change. 
Yes. Granholm visited Grand Forks on Thursday uh, to go tour one of these bullshit uh, carbon storage things. Following the tour, they held a discussion with energy company executives from across the state. Uh, you know, so there is Joe Biden's energy secretary. Uh, I'm not, I don't know if she was bumping uglies, but she was certainly rubbing noses in other anatomical parts with, you know, just, just having these little powwows with these uh, oil and gas executives in, in, uh, in North Dakota calling the oil and gas industry a gift to the planet. It was, it was Jill Stein, I remember uh, Jill Stein uh, during her, you know, when she was running for president for the Green Party in 2016, she was not allowed to make a campaign stop in North Carolina, I mean, in, in, in North Dakota, because she has, I guess it's still outstanding, that Jill Stein had, and I assume still has, a warrant for her arrest for defacing a bulldozer. Uh, the day that we have a president uh, in the White House with a warrant for their arrest for uh, defacing a bulldozer is the time uh, that we can have some hopium on this planet. I think what Jill did, if I recall, that she took a can of that bright green, bright pink uh, spray paint and she spray painted, the, you know, the Rolling Stones lips across the blade of a bulldozer in some uh, North Dakota oil patch field and was promptly uh, served a warrant for her arrest. Anyway, what's next here? This is in no particular order. <clears throat> oh, this is more about COP15. Yes. <clears throat> uh, the most important global meeting you have never heard of is now. Yes. Uh, the problem COP15 seeks to tackle is a rapid collapse of species and systems that collectively sustain life on Earth. The stakes at the two meetings, you know, COP15 and COP26, are equally high, many leading scientists say, but the biodiversity crisis has received far less attention. Yes. Uh, so, uh, I know there's some hopium, or I wouldn't have, uh, I don't see much hopium in here. It's got to get to the hopium. Uh, on and on. Okay. Uh, is there any, maybe, uh, I, actually, I don't think I had, okay, here we go. Now, 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 keep in mind, as they mentioned earlier in the story, uh, that virtually every single biodiversity target the United Nations has ever set has failed. A 100% failure rate. Uh, but don't worry, we now have 21 targets that act as a blueprint for reducing biodiversity loss on planet Earth. I'm not going to go through all 21. Let's look. Uh, create a plan across the entire land and waters of each country to make the best decisions about where to conduct activities like farming and mining. Yeah, okay. Ensure, number two, ensure 
that wild species are hunted and fished sustainably and safely. Yes, wild species are hunted and fished sustainably and safely. Uh, reduce subsidies, these planet eating subsidies by at least $500 billion per year. And of course, the showpiece safeguard at least 30% of the planet by 2030. In the next 10 years, you know, we are going to save 30% of the planet uh, you know, for all of our other biodiverse fellow earthlings, they get 30%, humans get 70%. Uh, okay, but let's look at how uh, one of the brilliant ideas for reducing plastic pollution. Okay. A half mile installation just took 20,000 pounds of plastic out of the Pacific Ocean. Proof, proof that ocean garbage can be cleaned. Yes. The Ocean Cleanup Project recently debuted a device it said collected 20,000 pounds from the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Yes. Uh, you know, remember this kid, he was 18, that, and he is now 27. Uh, th this young man has been perfecting his, uh, you know, his little thing to, to scoop up plastic, uh, <laughs> talking about all his failures. But uh, now, trumpeting uh, as a major success, uh, 20,000 pounds. Does it say anywhere how many uh, millions of tons of plastic are, uh, are dumped into the ocean? And... Uh, well, I, I can't believe it. Uh, I can't believe it. They actually uh, shoot some holes in it. So I know this is a hopium thing, but uh, unbelievably, and good for whoever this is, uh, talking about, you know, good for the ocean. How can you say this is a bad thing? All right. It never really says where all of this plastic that they get, where they take it to, that's left as a mystery. But here we go, again, throwing, throwing some, uh, a wet blanket on the party. Uh, the ocean cleanup system captures only that plastic floating near the ocean surface. A study published last year suggested that there may be upwards of 30 times as much plastic at the bottom of the ocean as there is near the surface. And of course, uh, large pieces of floating plastic ultimately grade into microplastics uh, that are much harder to clean up. And of course, the device does not prevent plastic from entering oceans to begin with. Researchers have estimated that about 11 million metric tons of plastic are dumped into the ocean every year. By 2040, that figure could rise to 29 million metric tons of plastic. This year, 11 million. By 2040, 29 million tons of plastic going into the ocean, if you just extrapolate this. Uh, Ten of these devices would be able to collect 15,000 to 20,000 metric tons of those 29 million 
metric tons every year. Okay, guys. Uh, now, I, I don't. I, I, I don't need I, the the uh, the title really says it all here. I don't know what I could. Uh, I don't know how I could. What I could add to this. So we're going to go to Greenland. Greenland's recipe for saving planet Earth. Moon dust. Moon dust is Greenland's recipe for saving planet Earth. This is not from The Onion. This is from Reuters News. Uh, <laughs> Among the glaciers and turquoise fjords of southwestern Greenland, a mining company is betting a rock similar to the one the Apollo missions brought back from the moon can address some of planet Earth's climate change problems. Yes, we are going to mine moon dust out of the retreating glaciers of Greenland. Uh, the moon dust, as it's being dubbed, has excited mining companies and mining investors hoping to sell it as a relatively sustainable source of aluminum as well as an ingredient to make fiberglass. There you go. Uh... Good luck on the moon dust, but we're going to go from Greenland. We're going to wind up in Bangladesh. I would like to thank, I believe it was Alert Tribes member, Brother JJ, uh, sending me this long story from the Atlantic. I am not making up. Again, this is not the onion. This is the Atlantic magazine Apparently, with not one trace of irony, Bangladesh really is a climate success story. Bangladesh really is a climate success story. Yes, the country of, Bi of Bangladesh shows the power of self-determination when it comes to development and climate policy. Yes. Uh, from the beginning, Bangladesh has remained in the imagination of much of the developed world a poster child for poverty and looming climate catastrophe, a warning for what will befall the global poor if climate change is not addressed. Yes. But anyway, the Atlantic uh, magazine is talking about uh, how Bangladesh is a climate success story uh, mainly talking about their abundant supply of natural gas. It is their uh, natural gas reserves is the reason that Bangladesh is a climate success story. Uh, all right, but let's... Uh, Where is the bottom line of this story? Okay. Anyway, it's not a very good bottom line. Uh, all right, the second to the bottom pair. We're going to wind up here. <clears throat> For countries such as Bangladesh, fossil fuels 
cannot be abandoned overnight, at least not within any global framework for mitigating climate change that could be characterized as sustainable or just. The transition to a low carbon economy in less developed nations should go as fast as it can and no faster, meaning that affordable, abundant energy services, such as all of that natural gas that Bangladesh is burning to be a poster child for a, a uh, climate success story, uh, meaning that affordable, abundant energy services and all the associated human development and economic benefits those bring cannot be given up in pursuit of climate change mitigation objectives. There you go. You heard it right there in the Atlantic magazine. But anyway, guys, I have to wrap up this uh, week's latest dose of hopium. I'm not sure how much hopium was really in there, come to think of it, but uh, I have to head to the sustainable Home Depot. I need to get some uh, a sustainable bulb planter and some sustainable bone meal, you know, from one of these factory farms, no doubt, because uh, I have 45 Save the Planet daffodil bulbs to get in the ground here in New York, baby, before I head to Florida. I highly suggest you get out there and plant your sustainable daffodil bulbs <clears throat> while you still can. Bye, guys.